Hello, beautiful patrons, and happy Sunday. Wonderful to be with you again. As always, thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. I hope that you've had a good week and that the week that has now already started is off to being a very good one indeed. Very quickly, I just want to talk about the idea of expectations as you're making transitions. In particular, I'll be referencing my transition moving from a belief in the supernatural to um, a non-belief in the supernatural. It doesn't take very much attention to stumble across the testimonies, if you will, of those within the secular movement who claim to have almost become enlightened once they let go of their religious belief systems, once they came upon the facts of reality, moved into a position of congruence with reality, then suddenly there was almost some form of enlightenment. I want to talk about those expectations for just a few minutes, and I want to come at this from the idea that it could be, but that it might not be. And I want to use, just as a very small illustration, um, the duality, the twin gods within mythology and many, many different forms of mythology from different cultures and different ages, we find this expression of duality. Um, Artemis and Apollo is a very good example. Artemis representing the moon, Apollo representing the sun. And what we know whenever we study mythology is that this expression of duality uh, is telling us that the twins are more than just siblings. They actually, together, when they come together, they are creating something that is far more complicated, far more complete when they are brought together. It's two sides of the same coin. I want to use that as a foundation for this idea of what to expect as we leave our supernatural superstitious traditions and move towards secular thought. As I've already stated, if you listen very carefully, you will begin to hear testimonies where almost supernatural powers are uh, bestowed upon people when they begin to let go of falsehoods and embrace facts. My position is, is that this could be true for some individuals, but then again, it might not be. Unfortunately, from my perspective, someone who not only was a Christian minister for 25 years, but was raised for 40, or lived for 42 years within a very religious environment, whenever I hear secular people making such claims, and I've probably been guilty of making very similar claims as well, it sounds a little religious to me. Doesn't always sound religious when I'm saying it, but it definitely sounds religious when I'm hearing it. It is religion that makes the claim that when you embrace a certain concept, when you embrace their ideas, when you embrace their belief structure, all of a sudden, all of the heavens will open up to you. The curtain will be drawn back and you will pass through the veil and experience divine understanding. You will then become enlightened. What I think happens, more times than not, is that you begin to truly embrace reality and all that comes with that. Does it mean that you will naturally be happier or that happiness will be the bounty that you will bring back through this experience? Not necessarily. Happiness, whatever it actually is, is contingent on many factors within life, physiology being one of them and a very important one of them. So if you've left religion and embraced the secular philosophy or the humanistic philosophy even, and you do not find yourself to be as happy as others are testifying to be, do not doubt your experience. Do not doubt the validity or the importance of your journey. Know that happiness sometimes has more to do with personality, physiology, neurology than it has to do with a belief system or a transition. We almost act as if by moving into the secular worldview that we're going to suddenly be fortunate, almost as if blessings are going to come our way. 
we only hear the positive testimonies. I've given positive testimonies myself, talking about bringing a congruency into my life, into my personality, seeing things for what they are, and embracing, even at the end of the book, my book, Hope After Faith, I do talk about some of the quote-unquote blessings that comes from moving in this direction. But that does not mean that it is without conflict. It does not mean that suddenly a non-divine hand is set upon our lives and that we're able to avoid all conflict and all trials and all controversy and all discouragements. Instead, we're left with the reality, the reality of life as it really exists, free from pretense. Not that that's always a pleasant experience. Sometimes it is the pretense that was more pleasant. So what is it that we do get for sure? Well, what we do get is an opportunity for personal growth. Just the very act of coming out, the very act of moving away from your traditions, the very act of being in conflict with your village, being in conflict with your loved ones, this very act is is a great exercise in personal growth. It stretches the human spirit. It stretches our minds. It stretches our hearts. And it causes us to take steps that we would never have taken on our own. This is a fantastic blessing, if you will, of moving and transitioning from one phase or one stage of life to the next. And with it comes the complication, the ability to embrace the complication that is life, the conflict that is life. But what I really want to express to you today is very simply this. When you hear someone else's testimony of all the good things that have come into their lives now that they have freed themselves from religion, if you hear that and you compare their experience to your experience and you feel as if you have not obtained the same level of happiness, you have not obtained the same level of freedom, you've not obtained the same level of enlightenment, you've not obtained the same level of blessing, do not count yourself out. Do not belittle your experience. Do not second guess yourself because almost like family photos... Many times, the testimonies we hear are just snapshots framed intentionally to only show the smiles. What you do know for sure is that you are growing, that you are changing and you are evolving. And even though you may not feel as if you are as happy or that you've obtained the happiness that you desire or that you have reached the fortune or the fortuneness that you desire, do not discredit the personal growth that's already taken place within your life. Embrace the complications Embrace how complicated it is whenever your Apollo and your Artemis come together, when the sun and the moon mixes within your life and mixes within your experience. Don't feel as if it is less in comparison to others, but feel as if it is more in comparison to who you were and where you were. This is, a not, this is not about perfection. This is about personal growth. This is not about meeting someone else's expectations or even your own expectations based off of your comparison of other people's experiences. This is not about expectations. This is about experience experiencing life as it is. The good, the bad, the ugly, the sun and the moon. This is about personal expression. Even when that expression may not be perfect. This is about reaching deep 
and pulling forward the ability to be brave. <laughs>